Hello there and a pleasant welcome to the national news here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. My name is Hassan Kouma for the headlines. Some concerned students of government granting aid at Nimco University of Petit Technology have called on government intervention in the payment of their tuition fees. The UGC is in solidarity with the abandoned 1,000 students of Limpopo University. I want to repeat that again. The NGC stands in solidarity with the abandoned 1,000 students of Limpopo University. Save the Chilean in partnership with the Initiative have commenced their 16 days of activism with the awareness raising campaign against gender-based violence. Limpopo University, Rainbow, um, DHMT, especially our young adolescents within our four um, operational communities decided to do a campaign work titled Mi Body Na Mi Right. The head of police media, Superintendent Brema Kamara, has admitted that the Sierra Leone police embarked on some demolition of tables on Wednesday, the 9th December 2020, at Lombly Market in Blue Town. If I tell you that no, 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 nothing. What do you mean? No, they say we push back. Santa, next now, they say we can move. They move on side. Yesterday, all man they call, all man they tell me what he has. We are saying we don't understand. You can't tell me what happened by right. They go tell me. Hey, now this one, now this one, no, 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 nothing. No, 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 nothing. Come on, I don't understand. Institute of Marine Biology and Oceanography has on Thursday, December 10, 2020, held a validation workshop on a project implementing on behalf of the UNDP. Very important document, which is the marine and institution planning document. Of course, the National Forest Board is one of the institutions implementing the UNDP funded project, which is the adapting to climate change in use of the management. The head of media in the Sierra Leone Police, Superintendent Brema Kamara, Explain more about their preparedness and the measure ahead of the by-election in Constituency 110. Secondly, we are now working on the what we call the deployment of personnel. You know, the job of the policeman or the job of the police normally when it comes to election, one has to do it and protecting the guys who are going to vote, protecting those ones who are conducting the exams. Those were the headlines and now for the news in details with me, Hassan Kouma. Some concerned students on government granting aid at the Limco University of Creative Technology as on Wednesday, December 9, 2020, held a news conference at the headquarters of Sludge Office in Freetown, calling on the government intervention in the payment of the tuition fees. Isabella Stanley now reports. During the press briefing, the students of the Limco Queen College of Technology made an impassioned plea to the government to go back on their decision. Ato Piaz, the Western Region Chairman of the National Grand Coalition, underscored the need for these students to go back to class. As he said, it's an emergency that the government needs to ensure that these students are not left out in the cold language. The NGC is in solidarity with the abandoned 1,000 students of Limpopo University. I want to repeat that again. The NGC stands in solidarity with the abandoned 1,000 students of Limpopo University. We sympathize with you for such a traumatic period in your life. We consider this as 15 months home with frustration. To demonstrate our commitment to this fight, for the abandoned Sierra Leonean student of Limcoquin, our Salon Force newspaper, the reporter is here present, to cover this outcome and to make public by the next edition. Also void <coughs> over the continuous neglect by the government to the poor and vulnerable students who are all Sierra Leoneans 
but are now deprived from an already government scholarship awarded to them. The NGC is asking a rhetorical question. We are saying, are these students considered by the government of SLPP to be beneficiaries of the previous government or are they considered as Sierra Leoneans? Elias suggests students who benefited from the scholarship highlighted how frustrating it has been for them for the past months. She noted that this has a physiological toll on them, especially when it comes to the administration, which prides itself of having quality education as its main priority, adding that their careers and future is currently in jeopardy. We are all Sierra Leoneans with families, relatives and loved ones who are looking forward to our success. I repeat, we are all Sierra Leoneans with families, relatives, and loved ones who are looking forward to our success. Today, it's been almost 15 months. I repeat again, 15 good months since our classes were brought to an abrupt halt as a result of the seemingly unending contract review or renegotiation process occasioned by the new direction government of tuition fees paid for us at the Lee Cogman University of Creative Technology. To draw the attention of the government to the real test of quality or value the Lee Cogman University of Creative Technology comes with to the process. Sadly, the indefinite suspension of classes and the protracted review of the contract have left student beneficiaries and well-meaning education stakeholders completely disillusioned. Even though our dreams have been defied, we are not giving up on our aspirations to contribute meaningfully to national development. Therefore, we are making a passionate last gap plea for government to happen to our cries and restore our hopes. Thomas Moore, County Executive Director of the Citizens Advocacy Network, who had been with them throughout all this fight, continued to call on the government to look into the plight of these students. To discuss issues that are very related to what we are discussing here today, which has to do with neglect, injustice, and total abandonment by people who are supposed to act. Those students, after graduating from the law department, from the college, with very sound degrees, for one way or another, we are denied admission into the Seattle Law School. It happened in 2014. After several attempts to actually get authorities to hack into their court, months passed by. Hopes were dashing. They became despondent. Some were going frustrated, traumatized. They decided to come to this hall to call the attention of the authorities to such a very crucial issue. For Star TV News, I am Isabella Stanley. Save the Chilean, in partnership with the Embo Initiative, have commenced their 16 days of activism with their awareness raising campaign against gender based violence. With the theme, Me Body, Me Right. The campaign took off from Bosworth and ended at Kalon Kappa Kabadin. Compiled by Alfie Barry, Gardena Studios, by Aisha Kamala. According to the communication manager of Save the Children, Bridget Lewis underscored the importance of this campaign, noting that they were able to draw participants from all their four operational areas, adding that they aim to lift the veil on adolescent sexual reproductive health. And, uh, partners, Limpopo University, Rainbow, um, DHMT, especially our young adolescents within our four um, operational communities decided to do a campaign work titled Mi Body, Na Mi Right. 
this particular theme came out from the adolescent sexual reproductive health game application that was developed by the young adolescents Limco Queen and Lulu Lab from Denmark for our young um, adolescents or young people to learn about themselves, to learn about teenage pregnancy, learn about puberty, menstrual hygiene, um, STIs and contraceptives, and of course my sexual health and rights. So they decide, we decided to see how best we can organize this campaign to formally advocate on the negative effects for people to know more about the neg negative effects of teenage pregnancy and also to increase the adolescent sexual reproductive health services within their operational communities. Princess Elliot from Rainbow Initiative. This activism will serve as a stark reminder to men that women, especially teenagers, should not be violated just to satisfy their insatiable appetite for sex. She stated that my body, my rights perfectly chimes with the occasion, adding that because a woman is dressed half naked should not serve as an incentive for a man to take advantage of her, emphasizing the need for consent before any sexual activity. Been like um, talking, engaging people, telling them that um, because the theme is my, my body, not my rights, which means my body, my rights. So we're hang, hanging posters around, giving posters, telling people what it means for the rights of a woman or a girl. It doesn't mean when a girl is dressed half naked, you should be tempted to touch her. It should be a consent of her before you touch her. And. Um, her body is not something that you should violate because you're a man or you think um, you have rights or because she, she has tempted you or been exposed. As a man, you got to get your values, you got to get your esteem and just be It's hoped that this activism will ignite action from policymakers and also help to change people's perception about sexual reproductive health. For Star TV News, compiled by Alfie Bari and read by Aisha Kamara. The head of police media, Superintendent Grandma Kamara, has admitted that the Sierra Leone police embarked us on demolition of tables on Wednesday, the 9th December 2020 at Longley Market in Tui Town, which he says is part of that border mandate in the congestion road. Alusine Bangua takes up the story. The chair lady of Lomley Market, C. Menu, explains how the demolition of their tables has seriously affected their livelihood as single parents in the market. She, however, called on the government to come to their aid by erecting a suitable market in the community. If I tell you, sir, no, 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 nothing. What do you mean? No, push back. Something. Next now. They say they can go up, they go all side. Yesterday, they call me, they call me, they tell me, they tell me, they tell me, I don't understand. You can't tell me, they have to buy right, they will tell me. Hey, now this one, now this one, though, I don't know nothing. Look at no lecture. Oh, but I don't understand nothing. I'm surprised. What do you think is happening? So, according to the Apple Society, I'm not going to leave that for explain to them. Hey, one country, so, one lunch of pressure, no. No, we have a wea. So, go tell the people, so, 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 but no, no, nothing. We don't understand nothing, my brother. Nothing. I don't understand. I broke them up. So, we say, yesterday, we'll up now, say, hey, I'll go there. We're not single parents then. My concrete I don't go take for cancel. I'll go leave this a holiday then. And then there, now the get money. This is a festive season. And then tell the profit. And then tell the get money. Most of we are not going to the boutique. So man, I know the go lens. For no more let can get away. For let it sell. We don't go buy market or no more trust. We don't go put up. We never will sell. Yes, I don't know sell. Go pay my credit. I'll go pay. Kaba Eskabu at Kida at the Lombly Market said they are tired of being intimidated by some police officers. He added that they have been beaten mercilessly by police officers, claiming to have come from the Lombly Police Station. He noted that they are shocked to see police officers harassing them in marketplaces that are meant to be in the care of the Freetown City Council. Kaba, however, called on the government to come to their rescue as this is their only means of survival. They don't care, they don't go all with table, they don't go with an station. No option all day. Where are they? They are gonna beg with the papa government. Let them look into this issue as so. When are you man them? Five grand to them for that matter. Although you're unfortunate, we not learn skill, we don't go school. We not business we don't put your attention on. Yeah, let the government. Sit so we let a reason with we let a every 
or talk to the police there, let them calm down for me in this situation here. So, today now we and city council and be the upgrades, but to just see police and cut into the uh, uh, issue as if we're not criminals there and we're not criminals there. But we tell the survival with a fair as it. All the youth men are right now. The youth men and beats are right now. If you see yesterday, the youth men and demonstrate, go to the uh, mayor. The mayor say, you know, if we are a uh, 14 they go on so and go and go go to the table and run out of the whip with the light. Head of media in the Sierra Leone Police, Superintendent Brian Makamara, admitted that they demolished the tables at Lomli Market because it is part of their mandate to clear off the road, pointing out that the traders have been unlawfully trading in the area. Yes, we cleared off the road. Uh, there were some tables or stores, whichever name we want to call them. They were on the road and uh, we needed to clear them off. So what we did was to clear them off because uh, we wanted free passage as we are now enjoying around that vicinity. You know, the whole thing about traffic you see, it should be the free passage, the free movement of people otherwise if factors pedestrians, goods, animals, as the case may be. And so if there were woodblocks, but those tables were serving as a kind of woodblocks, and thus hindering the movement of people, so we needed to remove them. So that was what we did. Reporting for Star News in Freetown, Alusain Abubakar Bangua. Institute of Marine Biology and Oceanography, as on Thursday, December 10, 2020, held a validation workshop on a project implementing on behalf of the UNDP on adapting to climate change risk management in the coastal areas of Sierra Leone. Isabella Stanley has more to the story. The head of climate change at the National Tourist Board, Henry David Bayo, when addressing members of the fourth estate on the score the relevance of the project in adapting to climate change, especially around the coastal areas in Sierra Leone. Mr. Bayo emphasized that climate change is real and support the Institute of the Marine Biology and Oceanography because tourism is a prominent attraction when it comes to climate change. Very important documents, which is the marine and special planning documents. Of course, the National Tourist Board is one of the institutions implementing the UNDP funded projects, which is the adapting to climate change in use coastal risk management in Sierra Leone. Of course, the importance of the marine and environment cannot be overstated. It is a critical environmental resource because it hosts a whole lot of wildlife and um, biodiversity. And the life of many people is dependent on the marine and coastal environment. The government has a whole lot of many tremendous strides at the national level. And also within the regional context, there has been enormous strides and at the global because we now have the United Nations Convention on the Laws uh, is related to protection of the marine and environment. At the regional level, we have the Abidjan Convention and this is a convention on the cooperation Mosiri project manager for the management project United Nations Development Program noted the importance of protecting coastal areas in Sierra Leone and that government should support policies that will mitigate the impact of climate change. She maintained that people should adapt with the use of clay to have a sustainable structure in resistance of flood and other hazardous climatic outbreaks. The same Thank <laughs> you. 
Star TV News, I am Isabella Stanley. Still watching the national news here on Star Television Network on Channel 21 with me, Hassan Kouma. As the long-awaited by-election in constituency 110 set to commence on Saturday, 12 December 2020, the head of media and the Salem Police Superintendent Brahma Kamara explained more about their preparedness and the measures they have to put in place to ensure a peaceful election. Alusan Kamara files in this report. Superintendent Brian Makamara, the head of media in the Sierra Leone police, intimated that they have put security measures in place to prevent the last ugly incident that occurred in constituency 110 at Godridge from repeating itself. Brian added that they have engaged political aspirants to ensure that there is a peaceful election. And secondly, we are now working on the part called the deployment of personnel. You know, the job of the policeman or the job of the police normally when it comes to election, one has to be um, protecting the guys who are going to vote, protecting those ones who are conducting the exams, the, the, elections. the elections, protecting those ones who are serving as observers, protecting the materials, the voting materials themselves. So that's basically our job. So this is why during the elections you see us making sure that the lines are orderly, making sure that when complaints do come, whether they come from the presiding officer or they come from the police center manager, understand? For as long as those institutions are very lawful, we look into them and then we take the appropriate line of action. So what basically we are going to do, and, uh, we're going to limit the movement of people. If you are a voter, you come and vote. You vote and then you make sure you leave the area. Because when it comes to convergence, we start with one individual and then the second one will come the third, the fourth, and then within 30 minutes or within an hour, you now have maybe a large number, say for example 20, 30 or 40 as the case may be. So we are going to ensure that we enforce that one. It's a, it's a rule. I mean, it's been in existence. When you vote, you go home. Understand? Go home and listen to what is going to be the outcome of the, 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 the elections. He pointed out that all necessary measures to ensure security safety are watertight. And then I spoke about limiting the movement of people. You know, there are some people who do not have anything to do with elections. They are not, they are not voters. They are not um, aspirants. Equally so, they are engaged in some other activities. Understand? But um, the fact of the matter is, if you are not a party, if you are not a party to the elections, hmm, we do not expect you come around, hmm? especially where the election is being held. So, say for example, this there is a police station here, you do not have anything to do there, we cannot allow you to be there. But when we ask the question, what are you doing here, and then you are just uh, uh, moving around, uh, somebody will say, you are like, it's not, no, no, we will not allow that one to happen. Because these are the guys who come, they settle, and then others will see them, probably they know that these guys might be there for another party. And then the other one will come, and then all of a sudden, things will be sort to a kind of violence, and no one that to happen. He, however, called on all Sierra Leoneans to remain calm and peaceful as their work is to ensure they protect lives and property. For Star News in Freetown, Alusain Abubakar Bangua reporting. Well, this is all we have time for international news here on Star Television Network on Channel 21. With me, Hassan Kouma. Thanks for watching and do stay with us for the very best.